Did you know that sickness and disease is a curse that you've been redeemed from? That's right, Jesus paid the price for us to be redeemed from sickness and disease. Stay tuned to find out more. Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terrades. Hello and welcome to Abundant Life. My name is Ashley Terrades and this is my wife Carly. And we're so glad you've joined us today. We've got an exciting program for you today. We're talking about healing and about how it's God's will for you to be well. Amen? Amen. This is exciting. I love it. Healing is one of my favorite subjects to teach on just because we've experienced so much healing in our own life. It's very personal to us. Um, in previous um, episodes, we've been, we've been talking about different testimonies mm -hmm. that have come up, the, the healing that's manifest in our family. I've been healed um, supernaturally of epilepsy after having seizures uh, for, for for over a decade. Mm -hmm. haven't had another seizure since I was healed 14 years ago, amen. And it's God's word, you know, God sent his word and healed us, amen. Psalm 1720, God sent his word and healed us. And when we start to look into the word of God, we find out that God had a plan from healing from the very beginning of time, that healing was always his will for our life. And today we're gonna to be looking about at how healing came into play for us when Jesus, um, rose from the dead. In fact, at the same time that we received salvation, we received the healer. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the healer. So when we receive Jesus, we receive the healer. That means we receive a healing into our spirit um, when, we received, when we received salvation. Amen. Same package. Same package. It was the original package deal. Amen. That's awesome. good news. Jesus paid for it all. It is. Amen. You know, in, in Deuteronomy, sickness and disease is, in Deuteronomy 28, sickness and disease is listed as one of the curses, mm -hmm. right? So sickness and disease was never supposed to be a blessing. It's not from God. It's Satan that is the author of sickness and disease. But listed under the blessings in that same chapter, is healing and health and prosperity and abundance in every area. Well, if you look into the New Testament, because I know some of you are already thinking, well, that's just an Old Testament scripture. I'm a New Testament believer, praise God. Right. If you look in Galatians 3, verse 13, it says that, that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Amen. So sickness and disease was part of, of the curses listed under the law, a consequence of disobedience. But under the New Testament, because of Jesus, he fulfilled the law. Amen. That, that means that he, he wiped out all of the... Um, the handwriting of accusation and requirements that the law presented to us. He fulfilled the law for us and redeemed us from the curse of the law. He also redeemed us from sickness and disease. Amen. So for, um, I'm just thinking uh, in, in 1 Peter 2.24, it says, by his stripes, by Jesus' stripes, we have been healed. We Amen. were healed. It's past testament. Amen. Jesus paid for. We're going to get into this in more detail. It's a great exchange. It you know, is. It's, it's, Jesus went to the cross and he took, he became sin on the cross and uh, took our sin and we get his righteousness. He took our poverty and we get his, his uh, prosperity, his, his uh, riches. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, and then he took stripes on his back, he took pain on, in his physical body, uh, 1 Peter 2.24, so that we can get health and healing. So Jesus took all the bad stuff to the cross, and we get all the good stuff. It's the great exchange, praise God. It's the gospel. Amen. Jesus paid for it. You know, Jesus was grace personified, and grace has provided everything we need to live the Christian life. Gr grace has provided everything to make us conquerors, to make us victorious. And our response by faith is to say, yes, Lord, I receive it. And it's as simple as that. It's the almost too good to be true news. It's the gospel, praise God. Amen. You know, sometimes people f um, struggle to receive healing because they feel like the sickness or disease in their body is a result of something they've done. It's mm. self-inflicted. It could be, you know, even something simple as a sports injury, or maybe, you know, it's an abuse of a, of a, of a substance or a you know, negative. I blew my knee out once. And it was, <laughs> I was playing soccer on the church soccer team and there was, I was on the other side and the senior pastor was coming one way and the associate pastor was coming the other way and I was coming down the middle of them and I thought, I can get there, I can get there. You know, it's football, we call it soccer, but in America, I guess it's soccer. Anyway. anyway. And I went, and I knew as I went for the tackle, I thought this isn't gonna end well, but I guess pride and everything else, I couldn't have oh, these yeah. two pride men. Oh yeah, pride comes before a fall, literally. Literally, that's what happened. Uh -huh. So I went in for the tackle, slid in. I, I'm pleased to say I got the ball, I beat the pastor, I beat the associate pastor, 
but my knee, no more. I was injured badly. No, no, and I remember no. struggling to receive healing for my knee because I thought it was self-inflicted. I did and it myself. And can play on your mind. And that's sort of a silly example, but you know, maybe I know there's people here that maybe through lifestyle choices, through things you've done, you've, you've created sickness in your body, you've created ailments in your body. You know, your healing isn't dependent on what you've done or haven't done. That's the good news. That's the good news right there. So forgive yourself. God's mm -hmm. already forgiven you. Forgive yourself if you've not treated your body right or put substances in your body that, that's caused uh, sickness. You know, don't do it anymore. It'd be wisdom not to do it anymore. But certainly God is not holding that against you. Right. God's healing you because he's good. Amen. I remember one time I met an elderly gentleman um, at a conference and he he was in a wheelchair and he was struggling with a lung condition with emphysema. And uh, he said to me, I just don't feel like I'm a candidate for healing because um, I've, uh, I was a musician in, in bars and lounges and um, just smoked all of my life. And the lung condition that I have now is a result of of abusing cigarettes mm. and nicotine. And so that damage, it's self-inflicted. I've caused this problem upon myself. I'm 80 years old now. Just don't feel like, you know, God, why, why should God heal me? And I'm that's not logical worthy. if you think about it. It's self-inflicted, it, that's logical. Right. When I started ministering to him, some of the very things that Ashley was just saying, that you didn't receive your salvation somehow based on your goodness, on your performance, because you were such a stellar person, you've just done everything perfectly. You know, salvation's a gift and healing comes in the same package as salvation. So healing likewise is a gift. It's not based on whether we deserve it or not, or whether we've done everything right, or whether we've even caused the condition to manifest in our body in the first place. God is not beyond healing somebody regardless of the situation. Healing is still for you and it has always been God's will and it's God's will just as much today as it has ever been. When I started ministering the truth to him, here's the truth of God's word that sets us free, right? He sent his word and healed us. This man had a big smile across his face and he said, well, in that case, you can pray for me. So as we, as we prayed for this gentleman, I mean, he just started to get strength in his body. He took his oxygen off. He started to take deep breaths. And then he started to stand up out of his wheelchair. He started to get excited as he could feel the healing power of God manifest in his body. He started walking up and down the, the auditorium. And it was then I noticed that his pants were a little short. <laughs> <laughs> like several inches too short. And uh, I didn't notice before because he was in the wheelchair. So obviously people are getting excited because his lungs are healed, and he's able to get up and walk around and he starts crying. And we are asking, well, why are you crying? This is a happy thing that's happening to you, right? He says, you don't understand. My spine has also um, been healed. Oh, wow. uh, he had grown. He was, he was several inches shorter. His pants fit when he came, right? right? But he had, he had some sort of scoliosis, some sort yeah. of damage to his spine. Not only did the power of God heal his lungs. It also straightened his spine, healed his spine. That's why his pants were too short. Amen. Right. But you know, it was such a powerful miracle to witness, but it all started with the love and the truth of God's word. Amen. And, and I know you've got a scripture here um, in Hebrews that really kind of puts this together yeah. nicely because sometimes we kind of distance ourselves from God, especially if we feel like, you know, we somehow deserve it or we're not worthy. We we'll actually won't go and get the help that, that God Amen. wants us to have. And let me put a quick disclaimer in here before I read this verse. We're not condoning, you know, condoning people to go and live any any way they want. You know, we 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 have to look after our temples. We're not just meant to go and abuse our bodies or anything like that. What we're saying is, if you have done that in the past. You know, God will, God will heal you, not based on, on what you've done in the past. So Amen. forgive yourself for that. But we're not, I don't want people to think, oh, Ashley and Carly don't said. Don't go live crazy. You can go your smoking body. and drinking and, and, and eating as much as you want and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, Amen. no, we're not saying that. There's wisdom, obviously, and you've got to, you've got to take care of your temple. But, but don't live saying, in condemnation. Don't live in condemnation. If that has been you, all of us have, have not lived how we should have lived. Let's just face it. None of us are deserving salvation. None of us are deserving healing. So we need to take it by grace. That's how it works. We take it by grace because, you know, we need God's grace. God loves us and heals us and saves us despite of us, not because of us. And anyone who thinks, you know, God better heal me because I've got it all together, that's pride. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that struggle to receive their healing. The mm -hmm. ones that say, you know what, I'm not worthy, I've messed up. They're the ones that receive much easier. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just want to put that disclaimer there because I always right. do the writers and say, my friend started smoking because you said it's okay. Gosh, don't write us off. Don't make a doctrine out of every little thing. <laughs> so this is this is a Hebrews four. I love this verse. Hebrews four, verse sixteen. This is Hebrews mm -hmm. four, verse sixteen. It says, "Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need." When we have a need, we should go boldly to God's throne. We should go boldly into God's presence because that's everything we need right there. God has everything we need for, for our healing, for our salvation, whatever it is, God has it for us. And we need to come boldly. And sometimes when we're sick 
or maybe we're struggling with a, with a, a sin in our life. Sometimes we run away from God and we don't actually go to God for the help. Right. I love it how the Passion Translation puts it. The Passion Translation puts it this way. It says, so now we, can, we come freely and boldly to where love is enthroned. I like that, where mm. love is enthroned. To receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace we urgently need to strengthen us in our time of weakness. When we're weak, we need God's grace. Amen. When we're weak, we need his strength. And that's the best time to run into his presence and run to his throne. Amen. And, you know, we spent the past few episodes talking about the importance of understanding God's will. Because if we don't understand that God's will is yes and amen, and he's only good, and he only has good things for us, and healing is from him, We'll, we'll shy away from him. We won't yeah. run boldly into the throne room, in, into, the, into where love and grace is that we, that we so desperately need in our, in our time of need. So we need, that, that's a really important point. But let's look at this. This is in our Romans chapter 10 and verse uh, 13. And it says, um, every, for everyone, that means everyone, by the way, yeah. right? No exclusion who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you might think, well, what has that got to do with healing? That's a, that's a salvation verse. There are many times in the scriptures that healing and salvation are put together in the same scripture. Mm -hmm. And the very word saved in the original text in the Greek in which it was written is the word soteria. And I wrote down the definition here. It means to save a suffering one from perishing, to make well, to heal, to restore to health, to save, to keep safe and sound, to rescue, deliver from danger, destruction, or peril. Yeah. All of those things are in that word saved. Where you see the word saved through the New Testament, um, it, it's, it means more than just our ticket to heaven. Right. Amen. And I think there are a lot of streaking Christians out there. Streaking a lot Christians. Of streaking You're going to have to explain that one, Carly. In other words, you've, you've put on the helmet of salvation, but you haven't put on all of the armor of God that He has provided for us. He's given us all kinds of things at our disposal, all kinds of benefits. We don't just have our ticket to heaven, our helmet of salvation, when we make Jesus the Lord of our life. When we receive Jesus into our hearts, we receive healing, we receive safety and favor and prosperity and, and, and forgiveness and deliverance, all of these things. All of these things, protection, all of these things are part of the salvation package that Jesus paid for for us. Mm -hmm. Healing is one of those original benefit package deals, Amen. right? And, and it, healing came we're at the point of salvation. Now, it's in our spirit, man, okay? One third of us is Holy Spirit. That's the God part of us that becomes alive when we get born again. We also have a flesh, our right. body, our flesh suit, our, our um, Holy Spirit temple, if you like, that right. you're talking about, that we have to look after, by the way. It's our flesh that gets weak if we, if we start to abuse it through drink or drugs or different things, a negative lifestyle. But then we have the third part of us, and that is our mind, will, and emotions, our soulish realm, okay? So we're actually three, we're not just one person. Right. We've got three parts to us. So it's a picture right? of God. So we're, spirit, of we're God. spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. And the good it's news totally. is in your spirit, you know, 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. In your spirit, when you got born again, your spirit became, you became one spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. you, are, you became like Jesus on your spirit. So in your spirit, you become one, one, one spirit of the Lord. Um, as I said, you, you, as Jesus is, so are you in this world, not just when you get to heaven, mm -hmm. but right now, your spirit is perfect. Uh, Ephesians talks about your spirit being sealed with the Holy Spirit. So your spirit, you've got it going on your spirit. In your spirit, you've got healing, you've got prosperity, you've got peace of mind, you've got salvation, you've got everything you need. You've got joy continuous in your spirit. But the issue is we also have a soul, like Carly mm -hmm. said, which is our mind, will and emotions. And then we have a flesh. The good news is we can choose what we do with our soul. So if we, if we renew our minds, that's why we need to renew our minds. That's why people are, you know, they could be saved and yet still li don't live a victorious life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people could be saved, but don't live the abundant life, the John 10, 10 life that Jesus came to provide. Why is that? Is it because they got half a salvation? No, it's because they're saved in their spirit and they have everything in their spirit, but they're not releasing it through their they're soul. They're not living it out. They're their, not living it flesh. out. Right. And, and what Romans 12 talks about is renewing our minds. We have to renew our minds to the promises of God. We have to renew our minds and we have to find out what God's word says about us. You know, we look in the, in the natural mirror to see what we look like in the flesh. We want to see what our flesh looks like, if our hair's in place. Some of it that's... looks better than others, Some right? flesh looks better than others. <laughs> Some, sometimes, you know, I've seen women look in their rear view mirror and all that to see. As they're so you, driving, doing you look, their makeup. <laughs> you look, that's right, you look in the mirror to see what your flesh looks like. We have to look in the mirror of the word of God to see who we are in the spirit. We don't understand who we are in the spirit until we look in the word of God. So when we look into the word of God, find out who we are, that's when our mind gets renewed 
to our spirit, to and the that's truth. That's where the transformation happens. That's where transformation happens. So that's how we can renew our mind. So we, it's our choice to renew our minds. It's our choice where our soul goes. And if, if our soul goes the way of the spirit, if our soul mm -hmm. goes with the truth, then our flesh will have to join in. Our flesh is two against one. Our flesh will have to line up and our physical ailments will have to go eventually. Amen. You know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man is in Christ, in Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Well, what part of us has become new? It's the spirit part of us has mm -hmm. become new. You know, when we got born again, we didn't look different. We didn't suddenly change appearance. Mm -hmm. We didn't become smarter or fatter or thinner or anything else, right? It, nothing on the outside changed about our outward appearance, but on the inside, something very significant happened. We received the Savior. We received Jesus, the healer. So now healing resides on the inside of us in the person of Jesus. You know, sometimes I ask people this question because I think, well, I, if that's true, I don't feel very healed. I don't look very healed. Nothing seems to have changed on the outside. That's because it's the spirit part of us that contains the healing power of God. Mm -hmm. But you know, I asked them this question. When you got saved, did you look any different? Well, you didn't, did you? You right. can't see salvation. Now, sometimes people look, you can tell they've got a weight lifted off them, whatever right. they can see. But they didn't but, change anything but in their natural physical appearance, flesh. no, no. They might, their eyes might sparkle a bit or something right. like that. But they have, nothing's changed in their physical We had to receive our salvation based on something we couldn't see. Mm -hmm. We had to receive our salvation by faith, mm -hmm. right? It's the same way we, rec we receive healing. We access the promise of, of God that grace has provided through faith. In other words, putting just a trust and confidence more in what the Word of God says than how we feel about it. And so, you know, we, in the same way that we can't be a little bit saved, we can't actually be a little bit healed, right? We, the, 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 the spirit part of us has all of the healing power that is ever going to need, but it's right down on the inside of us in the, in the person of Jesus. So rather than starting at a point of, I'm sick and I'm trying to get healing, healing's out there and I'm trying you're to get it. You're thinking it's out here in the atmosphere Yeah, we're trying somewhere. to acquire healing. I might not get it. Even, even if you believe it's God's will, which is the truth, even if you're convinced it's God, by now you should be convinced it's God's will for you to be healed. If healing's out there and you're, you're trying to get it, there's a chance you might not get it. You there. might miss it. You might not receive it. You might do something wrong. The conditions might not be just exactly. perfect. Instead, really the truth is you are the healed. You're already healed of the Lord. Mm -hmm. you, you, in your spirit, you're 100% healed. That's what the you're the healed of the Lord. And you're fighting off sickness. That's a very difference. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to defend a position than trying to take a position. You can defend a position very mm -hmm. easily. So basically, you're already healed. You've already won the victory. Jesus has already paid the price for you in this area. It's, it's a done deal. Right. Now, you're just defending that victory rather than trying to go in and getting the victory. That's a big difference. You it's know? hugely it's, different. It's like a rigged game. If there was a game and it was rigged and you knew you, you won anyway, all you have to do is show up and you win. Well, sometimes as Christians, we don't even show up sometimes. We don't even right. believe the game's on, but the game's on, but it's a fixed match. I've read the book, I've read the Bible, I've read the, I've read the back of the book, we win. Amen. The only way we won't win is if we quit and we stop believing. So as long as you stop, keep believing, as long as, you, as long as you put your faith in God and keep trusting God, you're going to win. It doesn't matter what the circumstances, what's going on in your life. God knows exactly what's going on. Amen. And he's given you everything you need to be victorious. You've already got it on the inside. So don't quit. The righteous get up one more time. Don't Amen. quit. Keep believing. Your victory is very close. Amen. Amen. My goodness, that's awesome. In um, Isaiah 53, let's go back there, because we a moment ago we mentioned 1 Peter 2, 24. Mm. Well, that's um, after the cross, and this is before the cross. It's actually the same scripture. But we're going to start in the beginning of Isaiah 53. It says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the armor of the Lord been revealed? Well, the armor of the Lord is talking about Jesus, mm -hmm. before Jesus was even born. But, but I love the way it says, who has believed our report? We have to believe it. We have to choose we have to, to believe it. to put faith in it. Belief yeah. is to just put faith in something, right? Who has believed? Believed our report, just like we're reading in, in 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 Romans. There, who has believed? Whoever calls on the name of the on the name of the Lord, and um, will be saved. Whoever whoever believes that report. Mm. In right? the Amplified, it says, "Whoever has believed, trusted in, relied on, and clung to mm. the message that was revealed to us." Amen. So this word that we're that we're teaching today about healing, this might be the first time that you've ever realized or ever ever heard that healing is even an option, that is even available, you know, and putting the way we access that truth and see it manifest in our flesh, which is where the sickness resides, mm -hmm. right? It's in our flesh. It means that we have to put trusting confidence in that. And, and that means to choose to put the word of God, this report above even how we feel, even the doctor's mm -hmm. report, right? So Isaiah 53, skip on down here 
to verse three, it says, he was, this is talking about Jesus. This is all the prophecy of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Those words sorrows and grief, they mean more than just to be sad, mm -hmm. right? More than just to have a heartache. This is talking about um, in, the original, in the original text, it means pain, grief, affliction, sickness, and disease. All of those things is wrapped up into those few words there. And so our, our, he was acquainted with our sickness and with our disease and with our pain. It says, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, we did not esteem him. Surely, here it is again, he has borne our grief and carried our, sick, and carried our sorrows. In other words, surely, that word grief and sorrows, it's talking about sickness and disease. Surely he has borne our sickness and mm. disease. He's taken it, right? It says, we, we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, our sins, and bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Mm -hmm. So that was a prophecy of Jesus before Jesus even walked the face of the earth. He was talking about how he would die on a cross, how he would be whipped, how he'd take stripes on his back that would pay the price for our, the healing of our sickness and our disease. God put his healing power, his, he, he made provision for us to be well before we even had the sickness in the first place. Isn't that amazing? That's I've powerful. heard it put this way, you know, uh, all our problems, basically any sickness, the root of it is ultimately the devil. Mm -hmm. So the devil is the root of all sickness, ultimately. And God is the answer to everything, ultimately. You know, mm -hmm. God is good and the devil is bad. We already covered this. And God has been around long before the devil. So really your answer was around before your problem even showed up. Wow. In fact, I've got news for you. Whatever your problem is today, whether it's sickness, whether it's peace of mind, anxiety, whether it's financial, whatever your problem is, whatever you're experiencing today, maybe it's an addiction, mm -hmm. maybe it's sin, whatever it is, the answer, the solution to that problem has been there way before your problem even turned up. There's always been a solution there. It's God and God has a way of getting that to you, praise God. If you'll believe it, grace has already provided it and you can see your breakthrough today, praise Amen. God. Read that Isaiah 53, that's really gonna bless you. That's the truth. And so Jesus has already paid the price for all these things. He paid the price for your peace of mind. He paid the price for your physical healing. He paid the price for your salvation, total package. It's the almost too good to be true news. And if you're born again today, it's yours. It's yours to take by faith and say, thank you, Jesus. And you're gonna receive it. And you might not, like Carly said, you may not see anything physically happen right away, but you watch, those circumstances are gonna to have to change. Those situations yeah. are gonna to have to change. You're gonna to have to line up with the good report. Amen. You know, sometimes we spend too much time looking at our outward circumstances. Mm. We've already mentioned that we are three parts to our being. We're a spirit, soul, and a body, right? And sickness resides in the place that we call flesh. Yep. Okay. And, but we are, we are a spirit first that happens to have a body. Right. And the spirit part of us is what became alive when we received Jesus. And our soul, that's our, that's our mind, our will, and our emotions. That's how we think about it. And then, you know, we only need to have a majority vote to see healing manifest in our flesh. If right. you can just get your thinking, your mind, will, and emotions, your soul in agreement with what's already happened in your spirit, the flesh is just going to follow suit. What we do is we end up doing it the other way around, right? Mm -hmm. If our flesh gives us a pain or our flesh communicates to us, then we'll line up our emotions and our thoughts of our flesh. I'm hungry, I'm tired, um, you know, I'm, I'm in pain. And we'll actually agree, our mind and emotions will actually agree with our flesh instead of agreeing with the spirit. Right. And we'll go with that and we'll actually be driven by our emotions. Right. And I think sometimes we do spend too much time on our emotions. Emotions aren't necessarily a bad thing, but they shouldn't be leading the deal. We should be leading with truth. We should be leading by the word of God and our emotions will follow. Right. And sometimes emotionally, you know, I heard one preacher put it this way. They said, uh, how are you today? He said, I don't ask myself how I feel. I tell myself how I feel. Right. I tell myself I'm healed. I tell myself I'm strong. And that's a good way of putting it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, another way of putting it is uh, the apostle Paul put it this way in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, he puts it this way. He says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. You have to walk by faith. You have to, you have to put the things of God, the word of God, put it in front of you, make it more real to you than what your emotions and what your flesh is telling you. That's why in, in Isaiah 53, um, he started out with, who's gonna believe this report? Mm -hmm. Which report are we placing more value on? Are we placing the, the report of our flesh about how we feel about the symptoms that are in our body, maybe what the doctor's report says, maybe think circumstances in the natural, whatever it feels like, above what the word of God says about our situation. Mm -hmm. You know, we found this with our daughter, Hannah, and many of you will heard our testimony. If you haven't seen that, we actually have a documentary video available on our website. You can uh, watch that for free on there. I encourage you to go there. It's like about a 20 minute documentary. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but with Hannah, she, she was sent home from the hospital to die at three years old. You know, that's not a report that any parent wants mm -hmm. to get. But we had to choose to put the Word of God, God's report, what God says about that condition, more highly, place it above, put more value to it than how we felt about it as parents or even what we could see or experience with our natural, the eyes, yeah. with our natural eyes. Mm -hmm. And when we started to do that, and we started to speak out over Hannah what the Word of God said about her situation, her situation, her physical situation started to change. Mm -hmm. We started to see the Word of God become manifest in Hannah's body. That very healing power that lives on the inside of us was released into Hannah's little body at three years old. And today she's, she's 15, 15 years old, she's healthy, she's strong, and she's never suffered with that sickness another day in her life. Right. But that happened because we started to, to believe the Word of God, God's report, above the doctor's report. Amen. And you know, if, if it worked for us, it's going to work for anybody. Amen. God's no respecter of person, so what, what He did for us, He'll do for you. And He longs for you to be healed. He longs for you to be whole. And He wants you to receive the promises He has for you. And that's why our ministry, Terry's Ministries, we, you know, we say we're empowering believers in the promises of God. Whatever promise it is, it's a yes for you. Mm -hmm. You can receive it yes, by faith, amen. praise God. Amen. God is so good. So believe God's report today. He's got amen. a good report for you. It's amen. a good report. Now, I know many people are watching and thinking, well, I still have sickness in my body. I still have pain in my body. Well, we have good news for you today. The healing power of God is yes and amen, and it's here for you today. So we'd like to take a short while just praying for you. And we amen. believe that you're going to um, receive your healing. It's going to manifest in your body as we pray. Amen. amen. So right now, wherever you are, receive the healing power of God. Mm -hmm. Father God, I thank you for everyone listening and watching today. I thank you, Lord, they are receiving your healing power. Right. I thank you, Lord, they are choosing to believe your report, your good report. And whatever's ailing them, whatever problem or symptoms they have, they're going right now in Jesus' right. name. Amen. And they're experiencing full abundant life in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Right now, we take authority over sickness and Amen. disease. We command it to leave. Amen. We command the spirit of infirmity to leave Amen. the hearts and minds and bodies of these believers. And we believe and we receive these things. We receive your healing power, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive today wherever you are. God's power is right there with you. Amen. Praise God. Well, thanks for being with us today. We'll be back real soon with another program. Remember, until next time, don't just settle for living a normal life when you could be living the abundant life. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com or call us at 719-600-3344. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We've been talking about healing and about the good report, God's good report for you. As you know, these TV programs are very short. We're limited on time. So we would love you to take advantage of the resources we have available. They're on your screen right now. They're going to go into much more detail about what we was teaching today, as well as other things regarding healing and about how you can receive your healing. Maybe you have loved ones that need this. Get it for them. But use the details on the screen. Go ahead and order your copy. You're going to be blessed. We're going to get deeper into the Word of God, and you're going to be able to experience even more of God's promises today. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com or call us at 719-600-3344. We want to thank the friends and partners of Teradez Ministries. Your faithful financial support enables us to produce the Abundant Life program and spread the good news of God's love around the world. If you have been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Teradez Ministries. Visit our website, teradezministries.com and become a partner today. Why live a normal life when you could be living the Abundant Life? Join us next time for the Abundant Life program with Ashley and Carly Terradez.